Today, DJI have released the new A3 drone. Alongside that, though, they've also released new firmware for the DJI Goggles 2, as well as the Goggles Integra, bringing support for the DJI FPV drone, aka the DJI Potato. Now, in this video, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what the situation is, what's changed, what still works with regards to the FCC hacks, and then at the end, I'm going to talk a little bit about the A3 and specifically the new O4 or OcuSync 4 that it has launched with. So the first thing to talk about is the new firmware for the Goggles 2 and the Goggles Integra. This is version 01.07.0000 and the only real change in this according to the DJI release notes is that it brings support for the DJI FPV drone or what is also lovingly known as the Potato. Now this is something people have been asking for for quite some time and frankly I'm actually really shocked they've done this. They've They've not only brought support for the potato on these, they've also added support for remote ID on that drone as well. And there's a firmware update for the DJI FPV drone too that aligns things. Now, this means that these goggles now work with the original DJI ear units, they work with the O3 ear unit, the DJI Avata, the FPV drone, the Mini 3 and the Mavic 3 series. However, this firmware did not bring support for the likes of the new A3 or any of the other models on the Goggles 2 or Integra. Now, the firmware between the Goggles 2 and Integra is basically the same, and whilst there is some differences between the Goggles themselves, support for these new models is on both of them, so no matter which one you've got, you are able to get support for the FPV drone on them. Now, as for why DJI have done this, well, it's probably a combination of things. Number one, there has been a lot of people asking for it, but number two, it's been widely known that the DJI FPV goggles version two are basically end of life, and up until now, the only place you've been able to buy them is with the FPV drone, and what I think you're probably going to see is a new package of the FPV drone alongside the goggles two or Integras, rather though than DJI replace the drone with a new model, Model, it seems they're going to continue to sell it and probably then sell it alongside these newer goggles. Now, the big question people will have with this new version 01.07 firmware is does the FCC or ham file hack still work on O3 and the Avata? And the answer to that is yes, I have checked it. There is no changes with regards to the ham file on the O3 ear unit or the Avata. What I can't answer though is the situation with regards to FCC or ham file hacks on the DJI FPV drone when using these goggles because I no longer have one. I will try and borrow one to be able to perform the tests on this, but at this moment, moment in time with regards to FCC on the FPV drone specifically and the goggles to an Integra, I'm not able to confirm what the situation is. Overall, it really is as simple as that. There isn't a lot else going on in this update. There isn't an update for O3. There's no other features. It really just is an update to bring support for the FPV potato on these newer goggles. Now, hopefully, DJI will continue to produce updates for the O3 system. It still isn't perfect. I do have a video talking about the issues on the Goggles 2, Integra, and the O3 system. If you're interested in seeing that, I will link to that in the description. But we still have a whole host of issues on this system, such as the low power mode behavior and all of the other quirks that the system has with regards to the remote controller support. Talking about remotes, there's also been no talk of any more compatibility with the DJI remotes or the DJI Love Toy. Pretty much everything is exactly the same on that, so if you've got the original one to use with the FPV drone, you're going to have to stick to it. Now, alongside the release of this firmware for the Goggles 2 and Integra, we've also seen the release of the new DJI A3. Now, there are lots of reviews and videos out there about the drone. I don't have it, but I do want to talk a little bit about the O4 or the OcuSync 4 technology that's in it, because it is something that's rather interesting. And actually, it's going to cause a lot of people to wonder what the future of the FPV system is. Now, this is a complex subject to go over. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a history lesson first before we talk about Oath 4 so you have an understanding of what the situation is.
Now the original DJI FPV system would be based on the technology which you could argue is called O2.5 or OcuSync 2.5. OcuSync 2 originally launched with the Mavic 2 series and then later we had the FPV system that moved on to DJI's own custom chipset known as the P1. I do have a write-up on this chipset which was put together by myself and Junus from FPV WTF on repair.wiki if you're interested in seeing it but the basics of this is it is a custom SOC that has the LTE baseband's and some ARM cores on board for performing the RF and video processing tasks. The way DJI FPV worked was the video came in, was processed by the P1, passed on to the modems on the P1 and then transmitted out and it was almost a one chip solution other than the fact of it needing external SRAM and storage to be able to hold the OS. With the release of DJI 03 they took what they did with the original FPV system and then added an external processor. So rather than the video processing and the RF side of things being done on the P1 on chipset, they actually off-boarded the video processing side to a chipset called the E3T. The simplest way to think about this is like having a PC with onboard graphics and a PC with an external graphics card like an RTX 3080. What DJI did was basically leverage the power of the external processor to improve the video encoding performance, but they still used the RF side of that original P1 chipset. Now before we move on to 04 you also have to understand that there's a second chipset known as the S1. DJI did use this alongside the P1 mostly in remote controls or lower end models and the big difference between the P1 and the S1 is the P1 was both the RF modem and ARM cores for processing and the S1 was just the RF modem. When DJI used that in other drones like the mini series they often coupled it again with an external processor to handle the video processing. This actually is a very similar setup to what they did with O3 but the reason they couldn't use the S1 in O3 is because it has limited bandwidth and it isn't capable of say the 50 megabits a second like we see on the P1 chipset that they used before. So what we had was DJI with two chipsets, one which was just basically an RF modem, one which was a modem and a processor, but they didn't have the same RF capabilities and as such DJI would swap between them depending on their use case. And when we look at it in 03, basically DJI had a chipset there that was only partly being used because they were having to offload the video processing to the more powerful E3T and the ARM cores on the P1 were simply redundant. Moving on to 04 and this is where things get interesting because it appears DJI have released what you could call an S2 chipset. Very similar to the S1 in the sense of it's still just the RF modem without the ARM cores. However, they have upgraded the RF modem. It is no longer limited to just the 20 megahertz carrier and it has more IO lanes as well, we believe, meaning that it actually could be a proper replacement for the original P1 when used in situations with an external processor. What we've seen so far with the limited information that we do have on 04 is that DJI now have the extra lanes allowing them to run up to six antennas. So for instance, the A3 does have six antennas now on the aircraft and four in the new DJI Remote 2. And that means that DJI are able to leverage the improved performance from that RF chipset. In the end, what DJI seem to have done here is built a new chipset, learning from some of their mistakes in the past, allowing them to leverage the improved performance from the RF end, also additional lanes for more antennas, and save money because this new chipset is going to be a smaller piece of silicon, they're not having to waste money on ARM cores they don't need, and they can continue to do what they've done with O3, offload the video processing and get the benefits from that without wasting space and cost on a chipset like the P1 that they're not able to fully utilize. So what this actually means for FPV is not clear because today 04 is only on the A3 and it remains to be seen how fast DJI intend to roll this out, but it doesn't necessarily mean that this is a new hard line in the sand. Really, 
technically there's no reason DJI could not combine this new chipset with the, the old goggles. It is really going to depend on what they decide to do and whilst it is a new chip it doesn't necessarily mean it has to break compatibility. It's really going to be down to what DJI choose to do with regards to their algorithm. It just shows with these goggles what they can do. If you now look at just all the different systems that these goggles are capable of receiving it shows how DJI is able to leverage their SDR, adjust its capabilities to support older and newer models and there's technically no reason they won't be able to do that with this chipset as well. However, at the end of the day it will be down to what DJI decide to do. So we have new firmware, potato support, 04 and a new drone. Now if you have found this video interesting and you'd like to learn more about OcuSync I do actually have a video on it and I'll put a link to that in the description if you're interested in seeing it and I'll pop it up there in the corner for you too. Finally I just want to say if you have found this video interesting please do let me know what you think in the comment section if you have any questions put them in there I will try and answer them as well. Furthermore if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It's only through the support of my patrons I'm able to keep making content on this channel and if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content in the future please do consider checking it out. Anyway that's it for me, stay safe, I'll speak to you soon.